University of Maine Cooperative Extension helps farmers and food producers bring you the local foods you love. These are the stories of the families who are growing Maine. This goes back a ways. In 1963, I think it was, and my father found this piece of land down below three miles, and he thought it was a good piece of land to build a hunting camp. So we bought this hundred acres, and I grew up down east, so I can see a blueberry bush anywhere. And there were several grown up fields down there. And so we gradually started cleaning up the fields and making blueberry ground out of it. And that's how this all got started. In 87, we bought this property and turned it into blueberry ground. I think it's very good. It's different. It's not anything I think I would have envisioned myself doing. We got married in 67 and then uh, went to graduate school in Texas and my first introduction to the blueberries was really the summers we would come back as a break from our studies. The wild ones, it's that combination of different types that you put that together in your cereal or anything and there's a sweetness that just you can't compare it with anything else. As we both started out in education for the last 30 years, I've been a real estate broker, and I've pretty much phased out of all that now, so I'm now a blueberry farmer, but, you know, I have a long background in that. So. Strange. strange farmers. Well, obviously, it doesn't fit, you know. but it's been an interesting life anyway. Well, it, it used to be, in the old days, we just basically worked for six weeks. We picked off even less. We picked the crop, took it to the freezer plant, and then that was basically our involvement. What I do these days is I rent bees, bring the bees in so they'll work the blossoms. We usually start picking uh, around the 22nd of July. We try to run as long as we possibly can, so we try to run through all, all of August. For six weeks, we're seven days a week. By eight o'clock, the crew shows up and in season, close to 30. We now have three walk-behind mechanical pickers, so we don't have any problem once the berries are ripe with keeping the processing plant busy with two fresh pack lines. We also, last two, three years ago, I bought a walk-in freezer, and we sell those year-round now. Whatever we put up one day goes in the cooler overnight, and then they have to be delivered the next day. Out of season, you're looking at the crew. <laughs> Blue's a helper. <laughs> True. Blue's the golden retriever who still is waiting to be trained. We're at a point now where the operation will sustain itself, but it's taken a while to get there. And then there's another component where we have a commercial kitchen and we do value-added products, and Lee's in charge of that. And value-added simply means you're doing something else with the blueberries. They're not fresh, they're not frozen. Um, we have jams and jellies and syrup and vinaigrette. There's always something going on. We sell what we call blueberry blossom honey. It's very popular. That, by the way, was the first value-added product we ever sold. And it's been interesting. We've created all these value-added products ourselves. We conjure up the recipes, have our friends come taste them, change them. Finally, we settle on something and then... One phase of the cooperative extension that helps with questions if you're, you're producing food, you, you know, they're really very helpful. You, you have a question, even if it's, it's a stupid question, you know. Uh, they're really responsive. Uh, and I found them to be very helpful. They analyze our products. It used to be in the old days that the main low bush blueberry was exclusively for the frozen market. Uh, we saw the handwriting on the wall 10, 15 years ago, and that's why we switched to fresh pack and frozen berries and value added. The value added portion has lots of potential to grow. <laughs>